Okay, we've got the uh, hot seat match coming up for you. Uh, Rick Molinero versus BJ Ussery. Let me get the scoreboard updated. And it looks like Rick's going to win the lag. Okay. So Rick will be breaking. Um, was able to get an update on the uh, Brandon Schuff Mike Soleil match. It is 5 to 2, uh, Brandon. I honestly thought it would be further along. But, all right. Well, Brandon is now racking, so it is no longer 5-2 to two Brandon, but I do not know who won that last rack. Uh, Mikey, well, even if he would have won, he wouldn't be happy at down 5-3 with Brandon breaking, but... Um, he looks really dejected, so I'm going to say it's 6-2. Yeah, I, w I would love for Rick to pull this out. I mean, BJ has been my pick to win it, but I would not be unhappy at all if Rick can pull off the upset and be the full-time upset and actually win this whole tournament right now. I mean, it, as long as he's been a staple in this community and... He used to have the pool hall that was above this bar. I think it'd be pretty good. Yeah, I agree. Local man makes good. <laughs> well, it's not that big, but... <laughs> so yeah, while we're waiting for them to get going, just a quick review. Hey, from back here, if I miss a shot, you can guide it to make sure it goes. Right? <laughs> yeah, I, ha I, ha I have a little pin. A little uh, magnifying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can try and make the uh, pocket bigger for you. Okay. I got you. Right. So, uh... Don't old shit. Too late. <laughs> so, uh, Brandon Schuff playing Mike Soleil in a 7th, 8th place match. Uh, Tony Long is the other 7th, 8th place finisher. The winner of Brandon and Mike will play Reggie Cutler in the 5th, 6th place match. The other 5th, 6th place finisher is Nathan Childress. Then the winner of that will take on Sean Wilkie in the 4th place match. And this is, of course, the hot seat match. So one side of the loser's bracket lagging behind the other side a bit. So that's why we have... We know who's in 5th, 6th from one side without knowing who's in 7th, 8th from the other side. Uh, Rick's got a stretch. That old man back out. <laughs> uh, he's had a really good tournament. I'm really happy for him. I know it's not done yet. Yeah. He, he needs to put a really good performance in here to be able to overcome BJ, though. Yeah, Brett, uh, Greg, Brett, Greg Roper uh, won the last time a... Uh, Pro won uh, one of the uh, bar box Maryland states. Uh, Brett won the only. Uh, excuse me. Brett won the nine ball. This or the eight, yeah the nine ball this year. I'm trying to remember who won the eight ball. Brandon Slazalis. And no, the Brandon Slazalis won the nine ball and eight ball last year. I think Pookie won the eight ball this year. I don't remember who won the ten ball last year. But if a pro didn't win the 10-ball last year, then the 10-ball two years ago was won by Johan Chua, uh, defeating Jesus Atencio in the final. That would be the last time that a... That was two years ago? That was two years ago. That was 18. That was the last one that was held at Bankshot. Yep, I remember that. I had the uh, unfortunate pleasure of playing Johan, and... Yes. Uh, that that fifteen minute match was the longest <laughs> match of my life. Hmm? Rick's been going at this pretty straightforward. I mean, there's there's nothing really where he needs to let his stroke out or try and go multiple rails. So he should be good. Mm -hmm. 
He's just going to shoot the six in the corner. He can play a stun shot. Just come on over, shoot the seven in the side, eight in the other side, nine in the corner, ten in the opposite corner, and he should be fine. All right. Since it's that straightforward, we should just go ahead, let Rick win this game. <laughs> BJ, go ahead and break. Yeah, I think BJ probably wants Rick to run them out. Yeah, I mean, let him get loose. He's nice like that. Like, he's been sitting for a while, which he really hasn't. But <laughs> he's trying to see if the eight ball passes. And that is a very good question. I don't think it does, but... No. And honestly, from his angle, he can just roll this forward. I mean, he's going to get a little bit straight on the 8, but he'll be able to play the 8 in the side or the corner. Or if he has the angle going to, uh, going to the 8, just stun it on the other side. So I think he can roll it. Oh. oh. Wow. Try to force it a little much. Got a little quick with his stroke on that one. Guessing BJ recharged the batteries in his headphones because he took them off halfway through his last match. Well, I've noticed that with a couple of his matches, he'll wear them for a little bit, but not the entire match. Oh, really? Yeah. I just assumed his batteries died the last time, but... Oh. Now, do you make a statement and bank the nine, or do you try and play safe in the hot seat match? Like, well, I think he might try and bank it. I think I would play safe, but I. Th he might think he can do both, but yeah, he's just going to play safe. Yeah. Yeah, I would. Uh, I'm just not a. I'm not comfortable with my banks, so. I'm really comfortable with this bank in particular. I don't know why. He hit and that safe pretty say, good. If you hit the safe, I mean, I think it may have leaked out to where Rick can see the side of the nine ball. No matter how I lean, As I can't say, get a better vision. Say, turning your head does not help when you're looking at a television screen. Disagree. <laughs> because everything's sideways when I turn my head. <laughs> From that distance, being able to thin this ball. I mean, that's, unfortunately, yeah. that's almost the best he could have done. He could have thinned it a little bit more, but from that distance, that's that's a really, yeah. really, really hard shot. Yeah, I just got a uh, message from Kurt Flushman. said the Kevin West won one of these tournaments. Kevin won, I believe it was the nine ball on the nine foot tables. We were actually just, uh, the question had been about bar box uh, tables. But yes, Kevin did win the nine ball on the nine foot tables last year. And Steve Fleming won the eight ball on the nine foot tables last year. I don't remember who won the ten ball. I might Ronnie Alcano. No, I, <laughs> I want to say Brandon, but I'm not certain. Was Ronnie two years ago on the big table? Possibly, I. Ronnie definitely. I, I did not play two years ago, um, and Ronnie definitely was not in any of the tournaments that I played in. Oh, yeah. So. You got to remember, I, I took a little time off. Yes, you did. So, uh, yeah. even though I tried to follow things, it, it was a little difficult. He's going to call the bank. Yeah, that's a little close for the cut. Oh, he hit it, hit it a little long. Yes, he did. And even though this is on the rail... Don't think Rick should have any problems with this shot. 
Never. Where's your phone? Yeah. This is my phone. No, I went oh. to pick up the phone instead of grabbing the mouse. All right. All right, and Rick does make it. Makes it one nothing, and BJ to break. All right, for those of you who have not been watching and uh, have not seen how good BJ has been breaking, you're in for a little bit of a treat. Uh, he he controls his cue ball, hits these balls extremely hard, and uh, that rack just explodes. Yes, I just uh, just looked in the uh, back in the Facebook page for On the Hill Productions. You are correct, uh, Greg. Sean Wilkie did win the eight ball this year, and Rick Molinaro will finish second in that event. Which means Pookie must have won the ten ball last year, because I know Pookie won one of these tournaments very recently. I think he might have got a little unlucky with how the five and the one set, but he might. St I think he can still throw that one ball in. Yeah, what, what's he? Yeah, the question is, can he do that and get down for the three ball? I think if you throw it in, it, it might give you nat naturally get you down there. Because some people like to throw this in with left. I like to throw it in with right. And you might be able, you might be able to come two rails down for the three, or if anything, also you bank the one. There you go. Just yeah. Just don't get behind the eight. All right. Did not. And then everything else is pretty open. Uh, either one of these players should be out from here. Oh, there's a hole there. Oh. All right, so BJ has made two pretty uncharacteristic mistakes so far. And uh, Rick needs to capitalize on them now because he's not going to continue making these mistakes. No, I agree. Uh But the more BJ allows Rick to stay in this match and get a lead, Rick's played <laughs> Johnny Archer, Mika Eminen. He's, he's played top-level pros before. He doesn't rattle. Uh, not, not in a tournament setting, so... So he can, he's going to handle his nerves very well. And... Uh, if he can get out here and have the break. So Brandon Schuft has just defeated Mike Soleil. I'll have to wait a minute for the score before they up till they update the brackets. Brandon will now be playing uh, Reggie Cutler. I'm going with Mike my 7-3. <laughs> Mike, 
Mike will finish in fifth, uh, seventh, eighth. That's good showing for Mike. That's a yes, very strong is. field. I mean, yes, very strong field. I mean, he went I mean, further than Shane. He knocked out Johnny Archer. Yeah, I, I heard the round of applause when that happened. Yeah. He didn't didn't have an easy road. He beat Johnny Archer, Jordy Palmieri. Oh wow. Mm. Rick's going to wish he had that one back. All right, so BJ does get a little reprieve from that. Uh, Rick had a little bad on the seven. Made it a good shot on... Yeah. Got bad shape on the seven. Made a good shot. It just it just hung. And now BJ is going to be able to take advantage of that, make it one one. But it is going to be Rick to break. Right. And Rick gets to get up there and take out his frustration on the break. <laughs> Yeah, we're... All right. Rick likes to put a little low left on his break. Draw to the rail. He's been popping that second ball in all the time, though. That's pretty... That's... Uh, if that seven ball was there, he'd have a clean shot. He would have a clean shot on the one, but as of it is right now, he can't even see it. Yeah. Where would you push to here? Almost where the eight ball is. And just hope that uh, BJ doesn't see that you can probably kick this ball in off the two. I don't know the way he's lining up. He thinks he can hit it. He was wrong. Yes, he was. Hey, you never know till you try. I mean, if if he doesn't hit the two there, that's a really that's that's a great opening shot. If you can keep BJ on the defensive, Casey and Jojo. Yep. Now BJ's trying to figure out the best possible way to get to get out here. I know he'd rather get out than play a safe, but he's not really confident with the out. Which I can't really blame him. So, looks like he's just going to play a safe and try and lock Rick behind the six. Now he keeps changing his mind. Now it looks like he wants to go for the out. Shoot the one, try and draw it back. It's okay if you hit the three or the seven when you come back. You just got to go around the two. Oh, he went for the safe. I like that play. I 
I do and I don't. Because the two only goes in one pocket. I mean, yes, you're a top-level player, so with ball in hand, you should be able to get on it. But honestly, I, I, th I think he could have got out there. There's enough room between the two and the one for the cue ball. Nothing's tied up. Yeah. yeah, but let's see what happens. Oh. He's he's won a lot more tournaments that I've even played in, so he's a, his experience. Uh, with where with where he set that one ball, if if he gets ball in hand without anything being disturbed, I wouldn't be surprised to see him send the one up by the four and lock the cue ball behind the ten eight and try and foul Rick out because Rick would be on two if he doesn't hit this. He would be. You're right. Uh, yes, Eddie, there is a three foul rule. That's a extremely hard ball to hit. Yeah, it is. You think overhead better? Um, uh, I don't know. Okay, we'll we'll keep it here. I really don't know how I. Honestly, there's only one way that I think to go. And I'm gonna go to the overhead to show it, and it's not a it's not a great shot, but it's the only way. You actually have to. You go here, and you have to spin it to lengthen it. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking as well. It's just even if you make a hit there, though. You might not even get a rail because so much stuff has been taken off the ball. Yeah. So that's he was in a really really tough spot. So as I said, I would uh, I would think he would try and send the one ball up over here behind the four and try and roll the cue ball. In there. You wouldn't try and. Oh. Go back to the line. I don't know where he's lining up now. But I thought he might be able to hit the top part of the four and get lucky and, like, put it behind the nine. The other possibility would be to send the one like that. Oh, and give him no and, way and to stick the cue ball there. Yeah, that gives him no, no, absolutely no way to hit the ball. Yeah. Or he could just try and run out, which is from where he's place the cue ball what it looks like he might be trying to do now or maybe he just felt better playing the safe off the two no I don't I don't like I don't, yeah, I don't. I have no clue. Like, what, what, what he was thinking. Because he didn't get there, and he actually left it wide yeah. open. I think he just overthought himself. I think maybe he was trying to go for the run out, but then, but he hit the one bad and didn't get where he wanted to be on the two. That's definitely a possibility. Who wants to gamble? Come on, let's go. 
So the fifth string quarterback that Denver had to use today. Yeah. He's one for nine for 13 yards and two interceptions. <laughs> completed more passes to the other team than he has to his own team. Yep. But they're still covering. Yeah. I mean, there's still 20 some minutes left in the game, but they're still covering at yes. the moment. Hey, New Orleans can drive all the way down, waste six minutes, and kick a field goal for all I care. Go into the fourth quarter with me still covering. I'm happy. <laughs> I think you're going to need a defensive score to. <laughs> they just kicked a 58 yard field goal just to get the three points. I'm in trouble. That's why I'm saying I think you're yeah. going to need a defensive score from Denver to have any chance at covering there. Hmm. Now, Rick's definitely going to hit this ball. It's just how hard he's going to hit it. Just lightly tap it, try and get it pie. Oh, I think he hit it a little too hard. I agree. Yeah. Oh, did he freeze to this? Oh. No, he bumped it. Got enough of a bump on the six. Actually, the point on the six he hit, even if he had froze to it, he might but might have been okay. But he bumped it enough anyways. Well, he hit that, that nice that and smooth. Very nice. Yeah. BJ have made a couple uncharacteristic mistakes. I don't expect that to happen again, but I'm not going to jinx him by saying he should be out. That's probably going to be all she wrote with this one. All this game. Just center ball comes straight up table. We put a little left in it to widen out the angle. Came around the 10, nice. Straight in. Rick concedes the 10. BJ goes up 2 to 1. BJ to break. I think I want to get wings. All right, BJ up two to one to break. Oh, scratches oh, inside. He is not happy with himself. He usually co controls his cue ball pretty well. The 
There's still time. You definitely need an offensive score or a defensive score. A special teams. Same difference. It's not coming from the quarterback. No. It's going to play the combo here. It should be no problem holding this two ball as long as it doesn't drop. And I guess he would have had the uh, three up in the corner had the two dropped, but. It's definitely not what he he wanted now. No, but he's all right. Now, do you just play the stop this ball and play the seven in the side and drift down? I am. Yeah, I'm. I probably I might pull it back just a hair, but. Yeah. Rick hits that ball pretty good. Gets on the 10. Perfect. And it should be 2-2 two to two with uh, Rick to break. Yep. 2-2, two to two, Rick break. Let's see. Uh, I think it's one nothing down there with uh, Reggie and Brandon. So how many people we got in the chat uh, rooting for Rick? I mean, we have a bye. We have a over 190 people viewing. We only have 47 likes. Um, if if you like Rick, give me a like. If you don't like Rick, give me a like. But I mean, honestly, in the chat, who all rooting for Rick and who all is rooting for uh, BJ? That is a really good break. Yes, it was a very good break. All right, well, we got one go BJ from Adam Law. KB says go Rick. There you go. It's tied 1 1. Oh, no, wait. Greg Roper said go Rick. Oh, yeah. Uh, we got three Ricks and one I'm BJ. Four for Rick, five for Rick. I'm expecting Rick to win this. Yeah, I mean, given that uh, Rick is local and probably most of the uh, viewers are somewhat local to the stream. Yeah, I don't believe uh, BJ shared the stream to his uh, Facebook page. <laughs> I don't know if BJ has a Facebook page, so... I don't know either. What's the money line? <laughs> uh, hey, we got a second BJ from Wayne Tharl. I'm going to say it's going to be BJ. And Adam Law is saying that BJ does have a Facebook page. Oh. So. Well, then he needs to accept my friend request I sent him seven years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but I think if I was going to handicap this, it'd be uh, BJ minus 230, Rick plus 165. Yeah. At this point in time. Adam is also saying that uh, BJ's girl shared the stream, so there should be some people down uh, from BJ's neck of the woods that uh, are watching the stream. I got to talk to her for about 10 seconds. She's a nice girl. <laughs> it was usually it was during my match when he was beating me up. So. Um, yeah. yeah, I had a, I had spent a lot the of... Whole, spent the whole time in the chair, so you figure you might as well talk to somebody. Yeah.
East Tennessee. Oh, okay. From people that are not local. Yeah. So well, that's good. Uh, yes, Logan. This is the hot seat match. Do you think if I send BJ a friend request now, he'll re he'll accept it during the match? No. Let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice shot. Yes, it was. Bonnie Hill thinks that BJ wins 7 5. I definitely think it's either going to be, I don't, I'm not going to predict who is going to win, but I think it'll definitely be either 7 5 or 7 6. I think this is going to be a close match that's going to go down to the wire. All right. Let's see how important our friendship is. If he accepts <laughs> it during the match or not. It'd be really nice if the girl had his phone and she accepted my friend request for him. Jeffrey Ball says he's rooting for the old guy all the way. We'll let you know that Rick told us before the match he doesn't like us calling him old, though. Yeah, back in his day, no one did that. I mean, <laughs> over under of me getting a new friend? Over, because I have like five different bots who have sent me friend requests. <laughs> so I could get a new friend anytime I want. They're just not real. So this is news to me. I am already friends with BJ on Facebook, so... Uh, too worried about silly stuff. Who won that game? BJ. Oh, did you mark it already? I don't know. No. No, okay. I'm like, yeah, okay, so 3-2 BJ with BJ breaking. Yeah, she. Uh, she's not sitting as close by as she has been in his previous matches, but that's because everybody is trying to keep distant, but there's still a little bit of a wall. So she's sitting about two tables over by herself, but still great view of the game. Alright. So BJ 3-2. to two. Lonnie Hill says he's known BJ for over 25 years, and he isn't friends with him on Facebook, so... So I have a chance to beat out Lonnie Hill. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> well, will you accept my friend request? <laughs> I never know exactly what he's pointing at. Sometimes I think he just points at stuff so people can't really figure out what he's pointing for. Sorry, if you want to talk about confusion, you should have seen the last guy I played last night. I couldn't figure out what he'd be pointing and lining stuff up that had there were no balls where he was lining up. But he, well, didn't you also say you you fouled, went to send him the cue ball, and he picked up the five ball? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, he also picked the cue ball up, put it down when he had ball in hand, chalked his cue, then forgot he had ball in hand and shot from where the cue ball lay. <laughs> <laughs> How did you ever win that match? <laughs> yeah, ne ne needless to say, that's not one of the matches that I was terribly uh, impressed by myself for winning. Actually, well, I don't want to say that. 7-1 seven, seven is pretty good. He got there. Rick is to do his favorite thing and jump. <laughs> no, 
I, I gotta I gotta agree. Rick has been a very essential person in the pool community for years in Maryland. Yes, he has. Uh, from owning the pool hall, uh, running straight pool leagues, uh, running tournaments, I for years from Bill and Billy's to Big Daddy's. I mean, even over at Willie D's. Willie D's was probably one of the strongest hole in the wall bars you could ever played in with him, Lee Fallon, and pretty much every old or guy that was there. <laughs> um, but no, he he's also helped bring up a lot of players. Yeah, I mean when Rick, I think when Brett first came to town, like Rick was Rick was his buddy, and then they they played a lot together. Greg Roper learned a lot from both of them. Um. I mean, Rick's been very essential. That's a good hit. And he didn't sell out. That one ball caroms off the fore end of the side. Yes, it does. I I hit this ball with a little low left. Carom it in there and then try and draw back down. Even the draw is going to hold it a little bit. So, would straight left just be better? Or do you have to draw to get back on the three? Yeah. He also makes the four and gets good shape on the three. Very nice shot. All he has to do is play a stop shot here. He doesn't really have to do anything. Yeah. There you go. Um... Now I like to spin this ball back up. Use a little low left. Just give yourself a little bit of an angle in the seven. Yeah. That's about as much angle as you need. And then pop this ball. Some people like to draw it straight back. I still like to go to the rail. All right, he went... He went in between. <laughs> and now, all BJ's got to do, play a stop shot here. Draw it back if you feel comfortable. But let's just play a stop shot, and you're good. Hmm. Mm. Got a little loose with that, but the ball still went in. Yep. And he goes up four to two. Two. And will be Rick's break. break. I don't think Rick knows that. <laughs> uh, BJ just told him. Yeah. Have a good one, sir. Uh, maybe Rick was trying uh, Joe Tomkowski's move from yesterday. He let his opponent rack the balls and then told him it was his break. Yeah. I don't actually think Joe did that intentionally. I think he just didn't realize it was his break until after his opponent had racked the balls. But Either way. It would have been pretty funny if he did it intentionally. But I don't know why I'm updating the bracket. There's... <laughs> There's two matches going on, and I can see both of them. They're still yeah. playing. I'm not going to lie. I was wondering a little bit. I think it just did become a habit of a thing to do every once in a while. Mm, looks like Rick has... Uh... Racked the balls and decided to take a break? Yep.
No, I can't see that relation at all. <laughs> 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 Adam Law said BJ went off to accept your friend request. Yes! But it was, no, I think he was joking about the break. It was actually Rick that took the break. And yes, uh, first place is $1,000. Uh, the payouts are in the ticker if you're interested. Actually, they're coming up right now in the ticker. Nice round number. Yes. One of these times I want to like have you guys pay like second place seven hundred and forty nine dollars and sixty cents? I've never seen places that do cents, but I have seen like when I went down to New Orleans last year for a big tournament down there. I know there was one place that paid four hundred and twenty one dollars. Oh, they take that calculation serious. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I think first place was like something in twenty three dollars. Like they didn't round it. Any, they they had their percentages and they took their they just rounded them to the nearest dollar. They didn't. You know what? I can respect that. Yeah. I don't like it, but I can respect <laughs> it. <laughs> like I would hate it if someone paid like sixty three cents. Sixty cents is okay. <laughs> I don't want to deal with the pennies. Nah. I don't even like dealing with one. I would rather not deal with fives when I'm doing tournament payouts. Hmm? Uh, no. All right, so uh, BJ's not really happy with the angle he got because the eight, the eight does go by, but for him to do anything here, honestly, all he has to do is draw back a little bit, and the eight, all he has to do is put top on the eight, and he'll be fine. He doesn't want to play it from where he's at there, though. So he's going to draw this ball back probably about a foot and a half. And he's going to be fine. Yeah, now he gives himself the angle. He can just float the eight in and uh, be able to make the nine and get out. He hits that ball pretty good. Now, same type of shot, just a little low right, come back out. Ten ball, same pocket. Yep, and that'll be a five to two lead with BJ up on the break next. So, started a little slow in this match, but it looks like BJ's catching a gear here. Okay, so Lonnie has not only known BJ 25 years, Lonnie, uh, BJ was a groomsman in his wedding, and they're still not friends. I'm guessing you guys don't use your Facebook very much. I don't. I could be wrong, but if I had ever had a wedding, I'm pretty sure I would be Facebook friends with my groomsman. I can honestly say, from when I almost got married, I am not friends with anybody who would have been my groomsman. When would that have been? Lacey. Oh, okay. Uh, actually, that's not true. My brother would have been a groomsman. 
Uh, yes, Reggie and Brandon are playing now. Um, I do not have any idea what the score is, though. Wants to hit the ten. Oh, oh. he wanted to hit the other side of the ten. Stay yes. Down. I love how he gets mad at himself. I really do. As he, I mean, I can see what you're saying, but I really think when I do that, it actually affects my game. So I tend not to like seeing that in people. But well, because for certain people, like they'll shake their head, but he actually like yells at himself. <laughs> He's like, "You dummy!" Watch yeah. Him. Ah. Wow. I do that. I, I also punch inanimate objects, which I did earlier today, and my hand is not happy about that. No. I cannot imagine that it would. I didn't punch anything. Oh, you also played well. You just lost to somebody that maybe played a hair better. That Whereas is correct. I was constantly missing the 8 and 9 ball. Yeah, it's really it's really bad idea to do against Joe. That's a bad idea to go do against anybody that's made it to the second day of this tournament. That is also correct. Yes. Yeah. If you're Rick, what do you do? I know what I do. I bank the three into the seven. He looks like he wants to cut this ball. I, did, I think there's a better chance of him cutting it than him banking into the seven. I don't mean making it. I mean that being his decision. I think it's more likely. No, no, he's calling the seven. That surprises me. I, mean, I guess if you think you can make the bank, then you're definitely going to be able to make the seven. Yeah. Lonnie says the matter BJ gets, the better he, better he plays. Oh, he's not going to be happy. I say, this is what I didn't like about that shot. See, I hit banks a little bit different. I I like to spin my banks more and hit them a little bit harder. No, I don't know where the cue ball and the seven ball or the three ball are going, but I'm not going to be locked up behind those balls. Hopefully. I mean, if he got through those balls to the other side, he was almost definitely going to end up with a shot. But Yeah, that's he, perfect. He ran, into the ran the risk of running into those balls, and he yeah. did. Now, if he learned to jump a little bit better, <laughs> uh, he just doesn't like jumping. Yes. But this the, would be a the, the last match he played on the stream, or maybe not the last one match he played on the stream today, he jumped twice, which, as I said at the time, was more jump shots than I had seen him play all year. Yeah. yeah he had told me, I bought the thing, I might as well use it. Yeah, apparently he's uh, gone away from that theory here, because yeah. I would be jumping at this ball all day long. Yeah. I mean, only, it's really only a half ball jump. But. Goes it, three rails in the. Oh, I thought he had that. I don't. Although I don't know if he called it. I think he did. Yes, Greg says that a lot of older players don't like to jump. That is true. Yes. I know when I first started playing, you, I'm not even sure jump cues existed. They may have been invented, but I didn't see one until probably eight or nine years after I started playing. I'm not even going to guess what year that was. We'll just say 95. No, actually it was the late 90s before I saw I know they were around before then, but I don't think I ever saw anybody with one until 98, 99. Then you saw someone with, hey, oh man, what's that short cue? <laughs> We got a pillar in your room. You got to play around the corner. Yeah, so one of the early AccuStats videos, there's a match that Johnny Archer is playing. He pulls out a jump cue and the commentators are like, I don't, what is that? And the one guy's like, I think I've heard of this. I believe they call that a jump cue. <laughs> uh, BJ is definitely playing well. Yes, he is. When he started a little shaky, Rick was able to capitalize on one of those games. Um, and now it's just going to be 
really, really, really hard for Rick to be able to come back 6-2 in an alternate break format. Yes, that's... I mean, if it were to go hill-hill, Rick would have three of the five breaks, but the way BJ's playing, winning twice on BJ's break just doesn't seem like it's going to happen. Yeah, that's a really tall order. Yes, Greg Earl definitely has a big issue with jumps. He is not a fan of them. I personally think the game should be played in three dimensions, but... All right, break to break, down six to two. He's been breaking fine. He just, a couple times he didn't get a good roll here or there. Oh, he squatted that cue ball nice. Yes, he did, but once but, again, he just again, doesn't have yes, a shot. But again, yes, the seven ball got the one ball blocked. He might be able to clip the thinnest piece of that one, but it would overcut the ball. He wouldn't be able to make it if he did. No, the, the only thing I can really see you doing here is kicking behind the one, trying to send the one up table and putting the uh, cue yeah, ball leave, behind leave the seven. the cue ball there. Yes. Yeah. Oh, just a little off, and he leaves a one-time combo for the match. That's tough, though. As I say, that is tough. He's at, if the one had stopped a little sooner, I'd say he, he has to back cut the one ball. Just a hair. He's going to. He's. I'm not. Yeah, I up six two. I'm not saying I wouldn't try it, but. Combo is pointed slightly into the long rail, so he can't cut it like he's trying to make the one. He'd have to overcut the one slightly. And good. he hits it very good. Knock, knocks it down. BJ takes the match, 7-2. to two.